The wind howls as the sprawling landscape below inches ever closer. Island chains are strung out like beads, nestled among archipelagos and peninsulas that jut out from the meandering shoreline. You could be forgiven for mistaking this scene for the jagged coastlines of Canada or Scotland, yet we are a billion miles from those countries. The Huygens lander has just entered the atmosphere of Titan, Saturn's largest moon. The ragged coves, bays and inlets below don't belong to bodies of water, but to widespread alien lakes of liquid ethane and methane. When Huygens touched down on Titan on the 14th of January 2005, it entered the record books as the most distant landing we'd ever pulled off. To this day, it remains the only time we've ever landed in the outer solar system. But just how long did Huygens last? And what did it discover in the process? And what is it doing now after two decades on this far off beach? You're watching V101 Space. My name's Rob, and if you enjoy diving into the wonders of space, don't forget to tap the subscribe button for much more to come. Titan blurs the line between moon and planet. For starters, it's called Titan for a reason. It's one of only two moons in the solar system larger than Mercury, the smallest planet. It is also the only one of nearly 300 moons in the solar system to have a thick atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure on Titan is 1.5 times that of Earth's. The only thing that stops it from being a planet is that it happens to orbit Saturn instead of the Sun. These tantalizing features make Titan arguably the most Earth-like place in the solar system, but with one key difference, temperature. It's typically minus 180 degrees Celsius on Titan. Such frigid temperatures mean that water ice stands in for rock, and liquid methane takes the place of liquid water. Yet, as we've seen, the resulting landscape is eerily familiar. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion mile trek to Saturn. Astronomers could hardly resist the chance to learn more so they dispatched Huygens for a closer look. Built by the European Space Agency, it piggybacked aboard NASA's Cassini mission, which left Earth in 1997 on a seven-year voyage to the famous ringed planet. Huygens was placed into hibernation for the voyage and only roused twice a year for a health check. Huygens would begin its descent six months after Cassini arrived at Saturn, Given the varied geological features on Titan, it wasn't obvious exactly what type of terrain the probe would end up touching down on. It could have found itself marooned on a mountain, or splashing down in an ice-cold lake. This uncertainty forced the probe's designers to prepare for all eventualities. The probe was about 2.7 meters and weighed roughly 318 kilograms. It was built like a shellfish. A hard shell protected its delicate interior from high temperatures during the descent through the atmosphere. The probe had two parts, the entry assembly module and the descent module. The entry assembly module carried the equipment to control Huygens after separation from Cassini and a heat shield acted as a brake and as thermal protection. The descent module contained the scientific instruments, along with three different parachutes that were deployed in sequence to control Huygens' descent to the surface of Titan. As it turned out, the landing ended up being a fairly genteel affair. 
The parachute opened without a hitch, and Huygens drifted to the ground at the same sedate speed as a ball dropped on Earth from hand height. In all, the descent took 2.5 hours. Huygens then carved out a 12-centimeter crater on the moon's surface, bounced and then slid 30 to 40 centimeters across the icy ground before coming to a standstill. Safe and sound on the surface, the probe could now survey its new surroundings. Huygens was buffeted by ground winds with speeds of a few meters per second. It also quickly took a now iconic photograph, an eerie panorama of a distant world equal parts alien and recognizable. The two rock-like objects just below the middle of the image are about 15 centimeters and 4 centimeters across, yet they are not rocks, but dirty lumps of water ice. There is evidence that the icy pebbles have been smoothed, perhaps by a flowing liquid. In other words, Huygens found itself in a dried-up riverbed a river once filled with the liquid methane that regularly rains from Titan's bulky atmosphere. But what is Huygens doing now, some two decades after it first touched down? You know, researching for these videos can be like navigating the cosmos an endless universe of tabs, articles, and resources. That's why I personally use the Opera browser. A feature I absolutely love are the tab islands. I often have dozens of tabs open, especially when deep into research about the latest astronomical discoveries. With Opera, you can easily group your open tabs into tab islands, which keeps everything tidy and easy to handle. You can expand and collapse them as needed in order to save space. Another handy feature is tab traces. The darker the underscore, the more recently you visited the tab. Opera also has a built-in AI tool named ARIA, Simply access ARIA's command line with a few keys, control plus forward slash or command plus forward slash, and type in your question. You can even ask ARIA to generate images, and if you want to know more about a certain image, you can just upload it and then ask ARIA. What are the reddish-brown line features on this moon? The split screen feature is super useful when comparing two different research papers, since I can use two tabs at the same time in the same browser window. I can even play or skip songs without interrupting my browsing thanks to the floating music player. You can also personalize your browser choosing different themes. My favorite is Aurora. But the best part? It's free! So click my link in the description and download the Opera browser today. All of Huygens data had to be gathered in a hurry. It only ever had three hours of battery life, and Titan is so dim that solar power was out of the question. Initially, mission controllers expected that most of the probe's power would be consumed during the landing phase. Before touchdown, they had planned for just half an hour of ground-based observations. In the end, Huygens eked out an admirable 72 minutes. This data was beamed back to Cassini high above, which then relayed the information back to Earth for astronomers to eagerly pore over. It is hard to say with any certainty what state Huygens is in today, two decades later. There's a chance it could be buried in silt, or that it was washed away in a flash flood. The meager power of the sun means that liquid takes a long time to evaporate from the moon's surface. About one centimeter's worth of liquid evaporates every year, compared to a meter's worth on Earth. However, Titan's thick atmosphere has the capacity to store hundreds of times more liquid than Earth's atmosphere. In other words, rain clouds on Titan take a long time to build up, but when they empty, they unleash an enormous amount of liquid. This is likely to lead to infrequent but torrential downpours and flash flooding. 
Such events could be decades or even centuries apart. So if Huygens hasn't encountered one so far, then its riverbed home is highly likely to be flooded in the future. Despite the harsh conditions of Titan, Huygens today is still probably intact. Its sturdy, highly resistant aluminium structure is likely still whole. However, its internal components, electronics, insulation, and parachutes would have almost certainly begun to deteriorate, possibly becoming stiff and brittle as the freezing temperatures gnaw at it. Today, the probe is a frozen, weathered relic, slowly becoming a part of its surrounding landscape. Over decades or centuries, if it hasn't already, Huygens will likely be encased in hydrocarbon sludge, partially preserved but trapped on Titan forever. The success of the Huygens mission has certainly whetted astronomers' appetites, and there's a growing clamor to return to Titan. NASA plans to launch the Dragonfly mission in 2028, hoping to arrive at the giant moon in 2034. It is a robotic rotorcraft, a bit like a helicopter, and its successful deployment would mark the first powered flight on a moon. It could take off and land many times, allowing it to explore multiple sites, rather than the solitary location available to Huygens. A big part of the Dragonfly mission will be astrobiology. If Titan really is the most Earth-like place in the solar system, how similar is its chemistry? Does it have the necessary biological building blocks for life? And has it ever had the right conditions to put them together? The mission could even tell us more about ourselves. Titan is sometimes referred to as an early Earth, but in a deep freeze. It's a time capsule, a window into what our planet may have been like billions of years ago. Perhaps it is only by sending probes like Huygens and Dragonfly a billion miles away that we'll be able to understand how Earth came to be our home in the first place.